Hey, what's up, Silver Stackers? Thank you for tuning in. This is Silver Slayer. Two days ago, something game-changing, very serious happened. Congress wants to bring back the gold standard. Now, this is very, very serious, and it tells a lot. Because one, that means that gold would be at a fixed price. Silver wouldn't. And two, it means that you would be able to redeem gold with your dollars. Do we have enough gold to do that? We definitely don't with silver. But since gold is at a fixed price, let's say it's fixed at $1,500 or $2,000, since silver isn't fixed, silver would be completely on its own. Silver could take on and would literally take on a complete life of its own because it's not following gold's path anymore. Silver always follows gold's path. It's called gold's little brother. If gold's going to rise 10%, silver's going to rise 15%. It mimics gold. But if we do revert back to a gold standard, that would completely detach silver from gold. Gold would be strictly a monetary metal, basically as it already is. Silver would be an industrial metal. And that's silver's best hand. Silver would not be considered money whatsoever to any degree. Since we got rid of the gold standard in 1971, you could say that both of those are quote-unquote money. But if we do go back to a gold standard, silver would be looked at strictly for its metal content. And that could be very, very good for silver. Regardless, I've always been saying for the last several years, silver is going to take on a life of its own someday. Regardless of what gold's doing, silver's going to do what it does. Because Silver's main purpose is the intrinsical value, the silver inside of it being the most highly conductive metal for thermal conductivity, electricity, and even light sensitivity. And as we advance in this new digital technological era, silver is what we need the most of, not gold. Gold sits around in coins and bars and jewelry. Silver, on the other hand, is very, very useful and critical for our advancement in this new digital futuristic age. I mean, think of a sci-fi movie, flying cars, you know, towers, everything's electrical, AIs. That's all silver. All of that requires boatloads of silver, but we don't have silver. And that's where silver is going to benefit from. And that's why when I always said silver is going to take on a life of its own, regardless of what gold does, regardless of the gold standard, ever. The gold standard coming back was never even the slightest possibility in my mind, ever. I never even considered that. I still don't even think that's realistic. Donald Trump jokingly mentioned it, but I don't think it's possible anymore. I think we're too deep in the hole. I think once we got rid of it in 1971, we shot ourselves in the foot. We probably had a, a, probably a five-year maybe 10 year gap where we could have brought it back and it's funny because you could see Richard Nixon even said we're just temporarily suspending it right but i think we're i think it's gone a little too far now we're too deep in the hole right we're trying to dig ourselves out of a hole think about that logic now there's a lot to this because not only i'm just talking about the logistics but what is this this speaks for itself if Congress is now stepping forward and mentioning we got to do something because inflation is spiraling out of control and we're, th this is only going to keep getting worse. They're looking for uh, a solution, whether that's a global reset. And my biggest question actually is, and he actually says a new gold standard. He doesn't say going back to the gold standard. They want to adopt a new gold standard. Does that just mean, you know, is that just you know, loose wording, does he mean it would be a new gold standard since gold obviously wouldn't be set at $35 anymore like it was? Um, and I'm curious what the price would be set at, right? And it's actually much deeper than this. And I already made a video covering this, but that was me reading word for word this entire article. Now I'm just sharing my opinions, and I'm sharing more of my opinions regarding silver. When I covered that article originally, I just wanted to talk about the, the entire, you know, the, the, all the information. But now, since it's set in, since you guys understand what's going on, and if you don't, go check out that video. Now we can dig a little deeper into the silver side of things and what this means. I think that, and here's the, the most important thing to remember, folks. Silver is much more useful than gold. Much more useful. Like I said, gold is 
is for coins and bars. And if gold is set at a fixed price, I it wouldn't be crazy for silver to even you know even um outperform gold in pri price wise either because you're looking at something that's set from a uh, a monetary perspective backing the dollar but when you have something else that is needed you know fundamentally for our future you can't compare them anymore they're they're literally not in the same asset class anymore they really weren't even before but regardless it wouldn't be crazy if silver if silver became more expensive than gold because gold is set at a price and it can't go up or down but silver can so eventually you could see the gold to silver ratio go from you know 88 to 1 down to 70 and then maybe as we get desensitized to these lower ratios 60 then maybe, you know, we see a big spike from silver, something happens, and it's down to 40. And over time, as we get desensitized, all of a sudden we're down to 20 to 1 again. Right now, looking at 20 to 1 sounds crazy because we're desensitized to 80. But over the years, as you get desensitized, it doesn't seem as crazy, right? It doesn't seem as crazy. That's the part people forget. They're just looking at it from right now, but in just look at silver's price when... When silver was $11 in March of 2020, people were desensitized to that. Even though, you know, right now you would say silver was $11 barely two years ago. I should have been buying bolos. But when it was there, people were desensitized to that extremely low price. So that was normal. But now, looking back at $11, that wasn't normal or that isn't normal. Or when you want to talk about, you know, Bitcoin or anything, you have to step back and look at the bigger picture. I definitely could see the gold to silver ratio falling, and the ratio wouldn't even be comparable anymore if we did revert back to a gold standard, because that's, that's basically comparing silver's value compared to gold, but how can you do that with one of them being at a set price used as money, literally, and the other one is used as an industrial metal? It's funny how gold and silver prices move so closely together when they're used for two completely different things. 100% different things. Yes, there is a little bit of gold in cell phones and laptops. I used to scrap gold out of cell phones. But when you're looking at silver side of things, silver is 100% an industrial metal nowadays, and it has to be. Every single scrap of silver, it needs to go into solar panels and electric vehicles. Yes, the even the investment sector nowadays. Even you know, local coin shops to big bullion dealers, they can't even get their hands on silver. I mean, we're looking at something that already exceeded a billion ounces this year. And think of how many billions of ounces we'll need by the year 2025. So if we did revert back to a gold standard, I'm going to go into something very important um, in a second as well. If we did revert back to a gold standard, I definitely could see silver, um, like I always have been saying, take on a life of its own, but even, even tenfold. Because then people won't be comparing silver's price to gold because you would you'd be detaching it since gold's price wouldn't move. And I think people might not understand that right now, but and here I'll try to break it down. Let's say gold is pegged at fifteen hundred dollars, and that's just what gold's price is, right? And you can redeem it, whatever. But silver over the years, right? Let, let's say silver next year. Uh, yeah, there's already a shortage. Silver easily could be $30, $40. So the gold to silver ratio lowers down to like, what, 70, maybe 65 to 1. So we're used to that. Then maybe, you know, maybe, who knows, triple digit silver could be by the year 2025. Regardless, you know, as silver climbs higher and gold stays the same, people start to forget that gold was 88 times more valuable. Just like back in the day, the gold to silver ratio was 16 to 1 for thousands of years. Until 1930, FDR got in office and changed it from 16 to 1 to 75 to 1 overnight. Single-handedly devalued silver. And we're used to that. The actual price coming out of the ground is 8 to 1, 7 or 8 to 1. That's what the natural price should be and actually should be lower than that when you when you also consider that silver's thrown away when it's dug up, especially since it's a byproduct. But regardless, it comes out of the ground that so that's what the quote unquote natural price should be is eight to one. But 
nowadays you can't even go off of that because you're going off of that fundamentally from supply and demand but if gold's pegged at something even if it's coming out of the ground eight to one that's irrelevant if silver's not fixed to a price so it makes things very confusing regardless though that's just my take on it i think even more so what would happen i think the most important thing is that people are actually talking about it i think that's the biggest thing out of this yes i like to get into the more complex um the more controversial nitty-gritty logistics of what would happen but i think just them trying to bring back this bill reverting back to the gold standard speaks for itself and i think that's the most important part of this entire um you know this entire new situation that has arrived you know, that, that's arising but regardless i want to mention something down here so this is where i think the guy messed up right here this is where he messed up see he's trying to get this bill passed right but he's trying to also and, and see this makes it almost seem like it's not even about the bill not even about really helping fix the dollar or fix our financial system. and by the way i also think it could be a digital currency backed by gold maybe you know a gold backed crypto to some extent not a crypto not bitcoin or anything but um even other countries are you know and even um i was watching an interview the other day you know higher ups seeming like sooner than later we're going to be getting a new gold backed currency um and, and i don't know if that's going to be a global reset from just the united states point of things or you know the BRICS nations what they're trying to do regardless though things are going to change but regardless, on, on that note, I wanted to mention what th I think this guy messed up on. So he's talking about this bill getting passed, but this is, this is where he gets a little, he, he, he starts reaching. He says, notably, Rep. Mooney's bill would also require full disclosure of all central bank and U.S. government gold holdings and gold-related financial transactions over the last six decades a seemingly taboo subject surrounded by mystery and deception. So, not only would they revert back to the gold standard, but he would also be exposing the entire corrupt financial system we're also living in. And not only just now, for six decades, 60 years of mystery and deception. So this just turned into a much more serious situation and also much more political on why they wouldn't want this bill to pass. If he didn't add that in there, I'm sure it'd be, it would be a lot more likely. And then also mentioning, and I quote, to enable the market and market participants to arrive at the fixed Federal Reserve note dollar gold parity in an orderly fashion, the Treasury Secretary and the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve shall each make publicly available all holdings of gold with a report of any purchases, sales, leases, and any other financial transactions involving gold since the temporary suspension in 1971 of gold redeemability obligations under the Bretton Woods Agreement of 1944. I mean, do you, he's reaching. If he, he shouldn't have added it, this is, he turned this in from, hey, this could possibly work in my opinion not really but now it's like okay you you you're just a far cry i mean but it is it's pretty crazy that he, i mean this guy he has some balls i mean for real like that that's that is a stretch furthermore hr 9157 requires that that's like the bill um the fed and the treasury should or to disclose all or disclose sorry all records pertaining to redemptions and transfers of United States gold in the 10 years preceding the temporary suspension in August 15, 1971 of gold redeemability obligations. I mean, if this bill got passed, there would be so much mess made out of this. It almost wouldn't even, like the, the gold standard would be, you know, that'd be something that could help but this would expose so much other mess and drama and um i think it would do more harm than go than good 
I mean, I don't even, I, I think we need a, an entire reset, nothing even, I don't even know anymore, honestly. Like, like we could go into crypto, we could go into, um, com uh, you know, a commodity, or I guess these digital commodities, ba or digital currencies backed by commodities, we could talk about yada, 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 X, Y, Z. Regardless, though, we don't know what's going to happen. Um, I've already shared, you know, my thoughts on what could happen or what, you know, what's the most likely and what's not likely. Um, and if he's talking about going back to a dollar system, fiat, like a $1, like a $20 bill, uh, you know, having that redeemable or redeeming, having gold redeemable for, you know, whatever the set price is, I don't think that's likely. I think it would be more likely to have a digital currency, especially since that seems like that's what people or the higher ups um, have already been leaning towards, especially as we advance this new digital age. I mean, think about a sci-fi movie. Nobody's carrying around dollar bills in their pocket. It's all, you know, it's going to be something very uh, digital, like crypto, instant transactions. You know, there, there's no um, dollar bills going around in cash registers. No, I mean, we're already heading into that. Cashless nations, card, you know, mobile banking, cardless ATMs, right? It's all... It's all digital now. So as we're printing off all these dollars, not only is it is it oversaturating and just killing the dollar strength, but it's also probably going to be non-existent or, or not even be useful sooner than later. I mean, printing out trillions. Um, but regardless, you know, there, there's a lot to this. I think, though, that the most important part about this entire thing is that Congress is even... You know, acknowledging that we should bring back a gold standard and precious metals being the solution. I always say there's no solution. There's only an alternative, and that alternative is gold and silver. But to use gold and silver as a solution, I think nowadays is just too far-fetched. But let me know what you think, unless there's some other variables, and that would be an extremely complex topic to dive into, which I'm not going to try to. I touched a little bit on it in this video, but... I don't know. Let me know what you think. I know that I threw a lot of opinions out there. I'm sure a lot of you are not going to agree with a lot of stuff I said. It's fine. All of us are just speculating and assuming. Who knows? Who knows? I don't know. I'm just saying what could happen and what couldn't happen and why. So, yeah. Hope you enjoyed this video. Go enter my 60,000 subscriber silver giveaway entry video. I'll be picking the winner in a couple of days. You're going to love it. Miles Franklin also is donating to the winner. You can buy silver and gold from them. Send an email to info at milesfranklin.com. They are still one of the only few authorized dealers working with the U.S. Mint as the U.S. Mint recently cut off, banned everyone else from publicly buying from them. You cannot buy silver or uh, from the U.S. Mint anymore. They cut off everyone. But Miles Franklin still can. It could be very beneficial to build a business relationship buying through them because they can access silver and large amounts of silver that none of these other mints can. I mean, they filled a $50 million order uh, a couple months ago, 900,000 eagles. Nobody else in this world could have pulled that off like Andy Schechtman did, and uh, he's the CEO of Miles Franklin. So I'm offering you um, a potential business relationship with a very powerful, most respected company in the industry, never had a negative review in over 45 years. I mean, we're talking about a very very um, important and uh, potentially beneficial um, relationship with a great dealer. And I'm glad I can offer that to you. Let him know Silver Slayer sent you. Andy would love to hear it as well. Loves when my, you know, my fans, my um, audience starts buying through them and builds that relationship. So pretty cool stuff. Anyways, link to this article will be in the description. This was Silver Slayer. I'll see you guys soon. Peace.